Welcome to the Miss Manual podcast, your home for viewing a female's perspective in the automotive, blue collar, and motorsports industry. Your host for today is me, Katie from Katie's Garage. And today on the Miss Manual podcast, I'm going to be talking to you about whether or not you should buy a project car and kind of some things that you should expect if you do decide that you are ready to venture into the world of project cars. So without further ado, let's get started. So I thought it would be really fun to kick this episode off by recording this podcast from inside my project car. So some of you may be listening just to the podcast. Some of you may be viewing this on YouTube and actually seeing me inside my project car. But to give you kind of an idea of what it looks like in here in case you're listening to the podcast, um, I am sitting inside my 1990 Toyota Celica GTS and I actually have two Toyota Celicas that are fifth generations. So I have a 1990, which is the one I'm in, and I also have a 1991 convertible GT Celica. And I will tell you a little bit more about them as we get going further into the podcast, but I'm gonna jump straight in with the tips and the things that you need to consider before you buy a project car. Because let me tell you, there is a lot that came up in this year long journey of having my red Celica and then recently with my black Celica um, that I did not expect. And I think it would be helpful if other people knew these <laughs> things before they get in over their head. So I'm gonna kind of start off with the what you should know before you buy a project car. So it's really important that you have a budget mapped out. So not only do you need to have the idea of how much you can spend in total, you need to know how much you can spend on the purchase price for your project car, how much you can spend rebuilding that car, and whether you want to do it all at once and just have a lump sum of money and just go for it, or if you want to do a monthly budget where you know, you're spending 100, 200, 300, whatever your budget is, dollars a month on your project car and slowly building it over time. And another thing that I kind of forgot about was I have a lot of basic tools to work on my cars, but every car is different. So there's always gonna be little things that you end up having to buy for tools that you maybe didn't expect. <laughs> do be prepared um, to also have to factor in a budget for tools. So you can do a total budget uh, as far as like $300 a month on parts and tools and go for it that way. Or if you want to say I can spend $50 a month on tools and whatever on parts for the car, do it that way. It's totally up to you and everyone is different. Another thing that is really important is to have a realistic understanding of what your skills are. Now, are you gonna buy a project car that needs to be completely rebuilt from the frame up and the only thing you've ever done is an oil change? Probably not the best idea. Um, if you have resources though, and people that can mentor you and help you and are willing to do that, then yes, you can probably get away with getting a project car that is going to push your skills and help you grow. But like I said, you have to make sure that those people are really actually willing to help you. Otherwise, you're gonna be really frustrated because you can't figure out what's going on and so in Jim Bob, whatever <laughs> your friend's name is. Is anyone named Jim Bob anymore? Uh, whatever your friend's name is, isn't showing up for you like they said they would. So you've got a project car that just sat for three years because you got stuck and didn't want to pay someone to do it for you. That kind of stuff happens. Um, the other thing that I wish I had considered more was do you really have a place to keep your project cars and to work on your project cars? So I have, I mean, my Instagram handle, my business name is Katie's Garage, but I don't actually have a garage. <laughs> so I have both of my project cars out in the open. I have a convertible that needs a new top and I have my black 
GTS Celica that has a ton of rust underneath of it. Now, is it ideal for them to be sitting outside in Washington winters? No. Did I think about that when I bought them? No. <laughs> So luckily I have family with a really large shop and they have, you know, my stepdad has a slow season in the winter and so I get to bring my car up to him. Um, probably will bring both of them up to his shop and I'll get to work on them up there. I am going to be incredibly spoiled and I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying these are things to consider. Um, he's actually purchasing a lift to install in his shop as well. So I will not only have access to a really nice large shop, I'm also going to have access to a lift, which is huge for removing the engine in my red car because it has a blown engine if you're not familiar with my project cars. And my black Celica needs to have the transmission dropped and looked at. I know I need a new clutch and some other things, so anyway. I don't have the facility here, like at my own house to do it, but I do have access to that. So just consider that and keep that in mind. The next thing that you have to ask yourself is you have the money, that's great. You have the place, that's awesome. Do you have the time and are you willing to sacrifice time with your family and your friends to build this car? Because it takes a lot of freaking time to build a project car. And I can honestly say I was working full time at my um, accounting job and then I was coming home and spending 15 to 20 hours a weekend working on my cars. So that did not leave a whole lot of room for anything else. Um, some of you have wives and husbands or girlfriends or whatever children and they're not going to be very happy if they never get to see you so it is a very big time commitment to have a project car so make sure that you are willing to do that and understand like how long it's going to take for you to build this car depending on what level of degradation it's in um is going to basically kind of determine that timeline for you. Um, then the last thing as far as before you buy a project car, well not the last thing but one of the most important considerations is to understand like what your goal is. Are you looking to do a full restoration on a 90s import like my red Celica convertible? Are you wanting to start with something that's already running, driving, is in pretty decent condition and spend your money on aftermarket parts and modding and stuff like that? So have a goal in mind, understand what you're capable of, understand your budget and be willing to be disciplined to stick to that as far as your budget and stuff goes. Um, Obviously, your car can change. Uh, you're, you can change what you want to do with your car over time. But, you know, <clears throat> I think it's going to help you in finding a project car if you understand what your goals actually are for that car. Okay. You got the project car. You did your research. And you know what you want. You found the car. It's the perfect one. Now what? Make sure that you understand this. You are going to hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. Because every single time I've ever dug into either one of my cars, it has not gone right. <laughs> and things tend to seem like they are simpler than they are, especially when you get into a car and you think it's one thing, so you tear it apart and you go to fix it and then you realize, oh my gosh, there's five more things I have to fix. So, my Celica convertible, I call her Sakura. I bought her from a gentleman. I'll call him a gentleman, even though I don't think he was very gentlemanly. Sold me the car for 200 bucks, so not a huge loss there. But he told me, it only needed a starter and a battery to run and it was going to be just fine. 
So I went and looked at this car and it was dark out. That was a mistake. Um, it looked like it had been rained in for a very long time. It smelled terribly of the neighborhood cat pee. And for some reason I still decided to buy it. But I looked at the engine bay, kind of looked around. I checked the oil level. The oil level was good, but I didn't look inside the valve cover. I didn't do any of the due diligence that I should have done looking at fluids, things like that. Bought the car anyway. Get it home, replace the starter, replace the battery. Today we're going to jump back into the Project Celica. I'm going to show you how to change a starter in your car. So an important thing to note is you have to figure out where your starter is. You can usually do this by doing a quick Google search or if you have a manual for your car like I do, it'll tell you exactly where the starter is and the procedure to take it out. So I'm lucky my starter is pretty much right on top of the engine, um, but a lot of you are going to find that your starters are actually underneath the engine, which is going to require you to go ahead and jack up the front or use some ramps. Please God, don't fall off. Over here, over here, over here. This is what I do. See, even though I'm recording, I feel like I'm alone so I can be a weirdo. So you guys will just have to deal with that. Well, I have a prime example of what not to do when you own a car. Nothing has surprised me, but check this out. It is missing a nut. Like, that is so dangerous. Come on, bro. A lot of people ask me what the plan is with this car. And honestly, all I want to do, number one, is see if it's going to run. But we're going to take a look and see what is happening here. So. Oh, gee. Ugh. That is disgusting. Go to turn it over. The car has zero compression. Zero. So I noticed that he had the timing belt cover off. And so I was like, oh, it looks like the timing belt's new. He probably just got the timing wrong. Replace the pulleys, replace the belt, the full shenanigans, went to start the car, zero compression. So I look in the engine, not promising. Basically, I got told it was one thing, replaced all those things, and the engine was blown. So obviously, I got in way over my head on this first project, thinking I was going to be able to put a couple hundred bucks into it, have a running car, and be able to have some fun in the summer. Um, not the case. <laughs> so hope for the best and expect the worst and build those kind of contingencies into your time and into your budget. Um, also understand like what your limit is with the car. Let's say you buy this car, you think it needs this, this, and this. Your goal is to just restore it to stock and you go and you lift the car up and you start doing things and you notice severe frame damage, severe rust damage, whatever it is that would be your like deal breaker. Keep those things in mind and be willing to cut your losses. So this is probably not a popular opinion with a lot of people who are into project cars, but there are just some things that are so extremely expensive to fix that you might be better off buying a different car. So if it's a super rare car and there's no way you're gonna find another one and you really got your heart set on fixing it and it is fixable, then go for it. But just keep in mind that there could be some other options for you. Some other tips for you. Uh, patience is a virtue and it's not the easiest thing when it comes to a project car understand that you're going to be spending more time working on your project car than you probably will be spending driving it. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of project cars. <laughs> um, with that, I mean, that's not going to be the case for everyone. But also, 
keep in mind that when you are fixing things, you also need to be really patient because there's been a lot of times where I said, okay, it's going to be 30 minutes to an hour. I'm going to replace this clutch master cylinder, pop it back in. We're going to be good to go. Five hours later, stripped the clutch master cylinder and I had brake fluid spewing everywhere. So <laughs> another example of things taking way longer than they should. Of course, that was my own fault was why it went like that. But you know, it was something I thought was going to be easy and it wasn't. Um, another thing, it is really easy to continue shopping for project cars <laughs> once you've bought one. And I recommend that you don't do this. Um, I have two now because I'm a sucker and I got told that this black car was going to the junkyard even though it still ran and I just couldn't let it go because I love me a fifth gen Zelica and I'm a sucker. Now, originally I was thinking, okay, I can either take the parts off the convertible and put it in to the black car or vice versa because most of the stuff in these is pretty interchangeable. Then I ended up having both of them in front of me and going, I can't part either of these cars out. Like I love both of them. So now I have two project cars to fix, but what I'm doing is I'm focusing on finishing one, at least to the point where I can drive it and have some fun with it. And then I will continue working on the other one. And I also have to do that to stay within my budget. So I'd recommend that you stick with one project car. <laughs> okay, the next thing. You, if you're sharing this journey on social media, uh, with your friends in real life, Instagram, whatever it is, everyone's going to have an opinion about what you should be doing with your car. And you need to be comfortable with the fact that this is your car and you're going to build it the way that you want to build it. And it does get very difficult sometimes to have people go, why are you doing it this way? This would look better. Or why do you want to do that? I think you should do this. And they will be suggesting things to you all day long. So you have to sometimes just smile and nod and say, yeah, that sounds really cool. And then be on your way. Because in the end, this is your car, it's your build, and you have to be happy with it. Another thing that um, you should keep in mind is, is this gonna be a car that you wanna keep forever? Is this a car that you're gonna wanna keep for a couple of years? Are you just building a drift car to try it out? Um, are you wanting to restore something? If you want to keep resale value in your car, you have to keep in mind that if you do all this crazy customization that cannot be reversed, you're gonna lose value on the car typically. So if it's something that you wanna have fun with for a couple years, treat it well and do your customizations, but hang on to your stock parts. Um, if you can do a wrap, over paint that's usually a good idea if you have a stock color underneath just tie that into your goals and think about how long you're actually going to keep this car um this one might be the most important thing and i'm sure you've all heard this if you're gonna buy a project car don't have it be your only car because as i said you're going to spend more time fixing it than you get driving it and it's really stressful when you have a project and you're trying to daily it and it breaks down and then you have no car. And it's just not a good idea. <laughs> and it would be better if you took that money and put it towards a dependable car that you can daily and then later on be responsible and then you can have fun and buy the project car when you've got a nice daily. I have a little Scion TC. I'm not customizing it. I'm not doing anything to it. It's just my daily driver. I have fun driving it, but these two are my project cars and I'm not stressed out that they're not running because I have that car. So keep that in mind. 
don't daily your project cars. Don't do it. The last thing that I have on my tips for you is just the higher the demand for the car, the higher the price is going to be. And at least in the import world, the more popular it is, the more crap you're going to have to deal with when you buy one because everyone and their mother has tried to tune the heck out of it. So you've got interior parts missing, you've got spray paint, you have plasti dip, you have tint on your tail lights. Ask me how I know. Um, it's going to be harder and harder to find a clean example of the car that you want. So if you want something that hasn't been screwed around with, you're gonna have to be really patient when you're car shopping. So keep that in mind. And with that, um, those are my tips for you about uh, if you're gonna buy a project car, kind of some things you should expect. Um, it always ends up costing more and taking more time than you expected. So I thought I would end it off with uh, some of uh, viewers comments on things they wish they knew before building a project car and there's a few common themes with what <laughs> I talked about so one of our listeners said that you won't be done with it within a year I can attest to that <laughs> How expensive, this is a specific one, AE86s can be to build. I can only imagine because they're super popular thanks to Initial D. <laughs> and they're cool. So, um, The most reasonably, reasonably priced parts are on eBay. That is pretty true. Um, be cautious with that because you don't really know the quality that you're getting. You can sometimes find OEM parts on eBay and of course, like with my old cars, these cars are almost 30 years old. So if I need parts uh, for like the interior and stuff, eBay is my go-to. So eBay can be a good source. Sophie said that I would end up with five more project cars. Yes, that is very true for a lot of people. Try not to fall into it. It costs so much money, takes so much time, and then you will never end up with a finished one because you're always working on all of them. Maintenance is important. Yes, yes, yes. Maintenance is important for your own build, but also you realize how crappy people treat their cars and don't do maintenance. You also realize that people put the wrong fluids in cars all the time because both of my cars had the wrong power steering fluid in them, and you could tell it had been mixed, so that's fun. Uh, Lady Elvis said, everything takes four times longer to install and fix than what I would expect it to take. 100%, absolutely, you think you're gonna be done today, but you're gonna be done tomorrow, or maybe the next day, depending on how much time you have to dedicate to your build. And also, where the end is, and to not be impulsive. So project cars are pretty much never ending build and it is also really easy to be impulsive. So keep your budget in mind, keep your goal in mind and you know, think about what you wanna get accomplished first because it's really easy to go, okay, the car's not running, but I just found this new fender and they're really hard to find. So maybe I should buy that. Try to keep yourself on track with one part of the project at a time. I know it's hard because parts are so hard to find sometimes, but you will literally end up with a stockpile of parts and a car that's not moving anywhere, getting anything done on it because you've kind of went squirrel brain on all these different parts. So keep your focus. You can do it. And that is what you need to know about building a project car. If you guys wanna learn more about my project cars, learn more about cars in general, I love, love, love 90s Toyotas. I have two Celicas. One day maybe I'll have a Supra and I'll get to feature that on my page. But if you wanna follow along with my journey and have some fun, you can find me at Katie's Garage on Instagram, at Katie's Garage on YouTube, 
and at katiesgarage.com if you want to connect with me there. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Miss Manual podcast. I would love it if you would take a screenshot of this episode, tag me in it, let us know what you loved about this episode, what your biggest takeaway was, because I love seeing how this podcast helps you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Keep on keeping on. We are Miss Manual.